Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Today's story, boys and girls, is about a teacher. Her name is Miss Susan Anderson. And she's the teacher of Knotty Pine Public School, Beaver Creek Branch. The Beaver Creek School is a small place a little way out of Knotty Pine. How Miss Susan got into trouble and just how Bill and the fellows got her out of it, well, that's our story for today. Set the record straight. To begin with, let's drop over to the Beaver Creek School, where Miss Susan is doing her best to bring order out of chaos. Children. 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 Now, that's enough of this. Now, the seventh grade is going to have an oral examination in grammar. Now, while this is going on, the rest of you will be quiet and listen. Justin Alexander, you will be first. Yes, Miss Susan? Justin, what is a collective noun? Uh, did, did you say a, a collective noun, Miss Susan? Yes. Well, it's... Uh, uh... Did you read your lesson at home, Justin? No, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> weren't you here yesterday when we went over it? Oh, yes, ma'am. And you have no idea what a collective noun is? No, ma'am. A teacher? Ask Pete. He knows. <laughs> Class. Class, quiet. Quiet. Now, that wasn't at all funny, Justin. And Peter Kloss, can you tell me what a collective noun is? <laughs> well, this takes the cake... What are you laughing at, Peter? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, Miss Susan. Oh, I was just laughing. Peter, what were you writing just before I called on you? It, uh, uh, it was just some writing, Miss Susan. Peter Kloss, open your notebook. Huh? Now open to the place where you were so busily writing. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Just what I thought. Basketball plays you were drawing. Peter Kloss, when are you going to learn something besides sports? Justin, let me see your notebook. Yes, Miss Susan. Here's where I was writing. And you were doing the same thing, Justin. Yes, ma'am. I'm ashamed of both of you. You've got all the time in the world for jokes and sports but none for education. Both of you will stay after school this afternoon and learn your grammar. Hiya, Pop! Hello, son. Say, uh, where have you been? You were due home an hour and a half ago. Oh, I... Uh, oh, I don't know. You don't know? I mean, uh, I mean, Miss Susan kept Justin and me after school. And why were you two young gentlemen the honored guests of Miss Anderson? Uh, well, it was her fault, Pop. Oh, her fault, huh? Well, how come? Well, if she wasn't so dead set against sports, she wouldn't have cared so much. Wouldn't have cared, uh... About what? Oh, she caught me in just drawing basketball plays. I see. Tell me, son, uh, how many times has Miss Susan kept you and Justin after school for the same thing? Oh, a couple of times during baseball season, uh, once during football, and this time. Four times, huh? She seems dead set against you fellas having anything to do with sports, doesn't she? Yeah. I wonder why. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's because she's a cripple. Oh, 
Morning, Lou. Uh, good morning, Mel. How are you today? I'm uh, the pink, boy. Good. Say, uh, did the big boss sign the quarterly statement last night? No, he said he'd do it first thing this morning. Uh, he liked your accounting summaries, Mel. Mm, that's fine. Say, uh, something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Peter didn't come home from school until after I got home last night, and I was what? wondering if... Is that right? Well, the same with my boy. Say, Mel, what do you think about their teacher, that Anderson girl? Yeah, I don't know what to think, Lou. If she's so prejudiced about sports, and I'm beginning to think she is, then she isn't the one to teach my son. To me, athletics is a vital part of education. Well, I'll say it is. It teaches coordination, teamwork, sportsmanship, and develops a competitive spirit that all youngsters need. Right. The upshot of it is, if Miss Anderson is going to give the youngsters a bad time whenever she catches them not doing the three R's, then I'm going to see that a change is made. Just what I was thinking, Mel. Seems to me she fails to realize that figuring out plays takes brain work and ingenuity, too. The next time this happens, I've made up my mind I'm going to read her the riot act. Well, I'll go along with that. You know what, Lou? No. My kid says she's dead against sports just because she's crippled. <laughs> Gather up your books and papers. Class, it's time to go home. Oh, Peter and Justin, you will stay after class. Aww. The rest of you are dismissed. <laughs> Peter and Justin, I'm keeping you behind for just one reason. I'm afraid you're not going to pass into the next grade unless you settle down and do your schoolwork. And to do that... You'll have to forget about sports. At least a while. My dad says that sports are what counts, not book learning. Now, I'm sure you misunderstood your father, Justin. No, he didn't, Miss Tuzan. My pop feels the same way. He says that athletics make you keen and sharp, makes you think. you got to learn sportsmanship and teamwork from sports. Well, I'd agree with that. And I can appreciate how your father feels, since both boys... Both of them were great in athletics in their day. You said it, Miss Susan. My dad was the greatest fullback state ever had. And my pop was the best track man state ever saw. He could run like the wind. But the primary reason that you're in school is not to learn sports, but to receive a basic education. Mm -hmm. And to get that, you've got to knuckle down to your schoolwork. If you don't, then I'm afraid I can't pass you to the next grade. Ah, uh, you're always picking on just and me. Just because we can't answer some silly old questions about history or something. Peter, believe me, I'm not picking on you two. Now let that be understood. All I'm asking is that you give up sports for a while and pass your examinations. Now, is that asking too much? You don't pick on the other kids like you do us. When I get home, I'm going to tell my dad about this. He'll tell you off. Yeah, so will my pop. You just don't like to see anybody have fun because you're crippled. Tell your father I'll be glad to talk to them at any time. We will. Don't worry about that. spring. Yeah, you're right there, old-timer. Yeah, the snow's getting pretty deep in most places. <laughs> One more blizzard ought to tie things up pretty good. Ah, uh, we get plenty more snow soon. It's no joke, then. Hey, there's Beaver Creek School ahead. Looks like a couple of the boys we kept after. Yeah. Hey, look at them take off for home. <laughs> Just like a couple of antelope being chased by a mountain lion. <laughs> look at them go. Look at this split. <laughs> Hey, look at school chimney. Hey, that could catch the roof on fire. Hey, we better get down there and fix that stove, or we'll have a fire on our hands. Come on, get come on, on, yeah, on. Come on, boy. Bill, Stumpy, by Henry and Greywolf. Come on in. Hello, Susan. 
You're late today, aren't you? Yes, I... I had a lot of papers to mark, so I thought I'd stay and finish them. I have to prepare my Sunday school lesson this evening. Uh, take a look at the stove, will you, fellas? Okay, Bill. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the stove, Bill. I, I just banged it. Well, we saw quite a few sparks flying out of the chimney as we rode up, so we thought it best to look in before the roof catches fire. Sparks? Well, what do you think caused that, Bill? Oh, I don't know yet. Uh, how's it look, fellas? Looks okay, Bill. Yeah. Probably needs the chimney cleaned out. That's cheaper than having to buy a new building. Well, I'll phone Mr. Winters this evening and tell him. Well, do you think it'll be safe overnight, Bill? Oh, I think so. We'll bank it heavily for you. That should do it. Well, more company. Yes, but these two fellas don't look too happy, Susan. And I think I know why. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Miss Anderson. Good afternoon. I'm Louis Alexander, uh, Justin's father. Miss Susan, this is Melvin Kloss, Peter's father. I'm glad to make your acquaintance. Excuse me, Bill. Certainly. And now, won't you gentlemen sit down? No, thank you. We well, won't be here that long. Oh, no, I wonder if I can be of any help to you. Uh, Miss Anderson, if we understand correctly, you won't pass our sons to the next grade because they're spending too much time on sports. That's hardly the reason, gentlemen. The true reason is that in fairness to the other children, I can't pass your sons if they don't meet the academic requirements. Which means? That they've got to knuckle down to the three R's and learn something. Now, all they seem to know or care to know is baseball and football and basketball and a dozen other sports. You wouldn't say that was wrong, would you? Yes, when it interferes with their basic education. Don't you agree? The question is, when does it interfere? And that's where our opinions differ. Now, you listen to me, young lady. My son has plenty of time to get the education he needs, but just now athletics are vital. And... More important than reading, writing, and arithmetic, Mr. Alexander? Well, you can stress that more than it's worth. I'd have you know my son is a fine sportsman. He's fair-minded and knows teamwork. You can't get that out of books, Miss Anderson. That's right. It's become more and more evident, Miss Anderson, that the standards are not what they used to be. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Bill, I... let me handle this. And the reason is that you're simply dead set against any athletic program. Now, that is not true. I think, gentlemen, it's if you... It's too late now to alibi, Miss Anderson. We're going to the school board and ask for your dismissal. Well, that is your prerogative, of course. Just uh, how much of a factor your own personal handicap is in this matter, you be the judge. Of all the prejudice and misunderstanding I've ever heard of, that takes the cake. Why, they didn't even give you a chance to get your mouth open, Miss Anderson. Oh, it doesn't matter, Henry. I'm sure that nothing will come of it. Oh, both these fathers are intelligent men. It's simply a misunderstanding, that's all. Well, I hope so. We'll see you Sunday morning, Susan. Oh, yes, Sunday school. Yes, I'll be there. Bye. Bye, Bye. Susan. So long, Miss Anderson. <laughs> What are you thinking about, Bill? I can tell you. He's thinking about Mel, Lou, and how angry they were. Ain't that right, Sonny? Yes, old-timer, you're right. Those two weren't just giving Susan a piece of their mind. They meant what they said. Ah, I watched their faces. I think you're right, Bill. Well, there isn't much we can do about it, is there, Bill? No, pal, there isn't. But I know one way I'll be able to tell if this will blow over like a loud storm. Oh, that's Bill. Both Peter and Justin are in my Sunday school class. If they're on the warpath Sunday morning, I'll know their fathers intend to start something. <laughs> Help us to love your son more and to learn to walk closer to him. Bless our studies together as we open our Bibles and you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, this morning, fellas, we're going to continue studying the gospel according to Mark. Last week, our lesson was about the rich young ruler who came to Jesus. Today, Peter, Justin, 
Uh, we're in Mark, the 10th chapter and the 17th verse. Oh, go ahead, Bill. We're listening. Yeah. Here was a young fellow who came to the Lord and wanted to know what he had to do to find eternal life. And the Lord Jesus asked him what he had done to deserve eternal life. Well, she turned him and she says, well, listen, Anna. Shut up, Joss. I don't think this is the place nor the time to discuss your outside problems, fellas. You came to Sunday school to learn about the Lord, not to talk to your friends about the week's events. Well, this is important, Bill. More important than what the Lord has to say to us, Justin? Well, I guess not. But this is important. Then after class, you can discuss it all you want. Right now, this lesson is the important thing. Ah, uh, you're as bad as Miss Susan. Sure, all teachers are the same. They like to take all the fun out of life. If you two fellas think I'm not doing the right thing, you can leave the class or the rest of us may study the Gospel of Mark. Well? Well, we don't want to leave, Bill. We'll listen. Yeah. That's fine, Peter. Justin, I'm glad for that. Now let's continue. Bill Jefferson caught us talking about Miss Susan and bawled us out, Pop. He did, huh? He was at the school with the rest of his rangers when Lou and I headed out with your teacher. I suppose he's taking her side. Well, if he wants a fight, he'll get it. Lou, I think we ought to get a petition up to the school board asking for Miss Susan's removal. A good idea. Let's get us started and push it for all we're worth. That's the story, Mr. Hazard. Well, if she's that set against athletics, then she's too prejudiced to teach my children. Sure, I'll sign the petition. Well, my daughter told me what's going on. If the teacher's that bad, she should get the axe. Lou, stop at my home. I want to sign that petition. I agree with you all the way, Lou. Bring that piece of paper around. Well, look at all the signatures we've got. <laughs> and how. When the school board sees this, they'll wake up and get a good teacher. Have you fellas heard the news? We sure have, young brother. We saw what people won't do when they don't use their heads. Ah, oh, this plenty bad. Whole countryside in turmoil over this. Yes, and the signatures. Look at them. How could they do it? Boy, what'll we do, Bill? The only thing we can do is to try and clear up this misunderstanding and prejudice. Yeah, it's simple, but how you aim to do that, sonny? Yeah, that plenty big order, Bill. I wonder when the school boy's going to meet to consider this petition. Any of you heard? Not I. Mm, no. I'm going to call Lance Fetrick and find out. I want to attend that meeting. The meeting will come to order. Order, please. <laughs> This special meeting of the Naughty Pine School Board has been called to hear a petition to remove Miss Susan Anderson as teacher from Beaver Creek School. <coughs> the secretary of the board will read the petition. <coughs> we, the undersigned, hereby demand that the teacher of Beaver Creek School be removed from her job and be replaced by one more competent. That's right. This teacher, Miss Anderson has displayed a gross disinterest in sports and athletics of any kind and has openly attacked several pupils because they've shown an interest in the same. The undersigned hereby state that this is an unhealthy educational atmosphere. And that said, Miss Susan Anderson shows great prejudice on this subject. It is hereby demanded that her resignation be obtained at once. This petition is signed by 40 persons directly involved 
in the above and recipients of the effects of the stated charges against his teacher. There are 50 registered students at the Beaver Creek School. The names of 40 heads of families appear on this petition. I must say that I did not ask Miss Susan to attend this hearing because I thought it best. We can speak freely at this time, and the board will make its decision after discussion. That is, if any discussion is necessary. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Jefferson. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Jefferson has the floor. Mr. Chairman, I challenge your acknowledgement of Bill Jefferson since he's not a parent of any of the Beaver Creek school children. In fact, he's not a parent at all. <laughs> your challenge is overruled, Mr. Claus. You have the floor, Bill. Thank you, Lance. For Mel's information, I am an interested party. <laughs> Not only because I was privileged to have a part in raising a boy who attended this school for years, but also because I heard Mel read the riot act personally to Miss Anderson before it ever came to the school board. I move that this meeting be adjourned until it can be held with Miss Anderson present. We ought not to condemn anyone without granting that one the privilege of a defense. There's a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? Mr. Chairman, apparently Mr. Jefferson is in sympathy with prejudiced teachers. I don't condone prejudice in teachers any more than I do in parents, Lou. I want to see a good teacher get a chance to defend herself. If in the face of that defense, the petition still holds good, that's another matter. Why don't you keep your nose out of this, Jefferson? The charges will stick whether she's here or not. That's right. Call a meeting in her presence if you want to. I'm not afraid to face her with a question. Then will you second the motion that's on the floor? Sure. I'll second the motion, Lance. You've heard the motion and the second. Are you ready for the question? Ask the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The motion is carried. <laughs> Bill, I'm awfully grateful for what you did at the meeting. I wanted to be there, but a substitute teacher wasn't available, and, of course, I had no authority to close school. Well, you don't need to thank me, Susan. I was only doing what's right. Bill, I'm afraid that they've built up a case against me, and nothing I can say will change it. Hmm? You don't mean you're ready to quit? No, I guess not, Bill. Only I'm getting awfully weary fighting this prejudice. Well, just keep your chin up, Susan. Trust the Lord completely, and he'll see that everything works out the way he wants it to. I will, Bill. I honestly mean that. Fine. Uh, by the way, what college did you attend, Susan? Oh, state normal. Why? Oh, just wondered. I'll see you Saturday morning. I hope everything turns out all right. Come to order. <coughs> Miss Anderson, I sent you a personal copy of the charges listed in the petition, which no doubt you've read. Can you and are you willing to protest them here before this gathering? I can, and I will. <coughs> First of all, are these charges true? No, they are not. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Claus. I would like to ask this teacher some questions. Proceed. Miss Anderson, you say that these charges are not true. Is that right? They're not only groundless, but absurd as well. Did you not verbally attack my son and Justin Alexander on four different occasions because they were preparing sports plays? I did. Did you not refuse to pass my son and Justin Alexander to the next grade because they put too much emphasis on sports? I did. Bill, she's hanging herself. Well, I don't think so, pal. Let's see what happened. I have no further questions, Lance. I would like to know why you did these things, Miss Anderson. 
Would you pass a student or students who drew sports plays during recitation hours and who couldn't say or wouldn't even try to learn their multiplication tables, Mr. Fetrick? I would not. <laughs> she hit him on the nose with that punch. <laughs> Ask her why she never allows sports during school hours and she won't take part in games with the children. Do you care to answer that, Miss Susan? Well, we can't have sports during the school hours because Beaver Creek School hasn't the facilities for such activities. And as to why I don't take part in games with the children, well, probably you Excuse can... Excuse me, Susan. Uh, Lance, may I have the floor? This is important. Uh, yes, Bill, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Folks, regarding these charges against Miss Anderson, I have two letters here I want to read to you. The first is by the Dean of Women, Miss Olive A. Beach, at State Teachers College. Dear Mr. Jefferson, she writes, you ask me concerning Miss Susan Anderson and her interest in sports. Miss Anderson held top scholastic honors while enrolled in this institution... Besides this, Susan obtained three letters in athletics. These were for swimming, tennis, and track. Most notable were her accomplishments in swimming because she set several new records, two of which are still unbeaten. I hope this information will be most satisfactory for your needs. Sincerely yours, Olive A. Beach, Dean of Women, State Teachers College. Bill, you shouldn't have done it. Now, folks... Let me read the second letter, and I'll withhold the name until the end. Dear Mr. Jefferson, I was a lad 15 years old when my life was saved by a girl. I was trying to navigate a canoe down the shady river when it was swollen by the spring rains. As I came into the rapids just before Dead Man's Gorge, my canoe smashed on the rocks of the rapids. This girl was picnicking along the riverbank with some friends, and she saw the danger I was in, dove into the river after me, and pulled me out. She saved my life. In the rescue, she was smashed several times against the rocks by the vicious current. One of those blows broke her ankle, but it didn't stop her from rescuing me. I will always be grateful for the courage of this girl who still bears the mark of her bravery, Susan Anderson. Sincerely yours, Thomas R. Winthrop, Mayor of Stocktown. You say Susan Anderson has no sympathy for sports? And you ask why she doesn't take part in games with the children? These letters give the reason. <coughs> Is there anyone else who would like the floor? Uh, yes, uh, I, I would like the floor uh, just to make a, a public apology to Miss Anderson. And I want to apologize, too, and say three cheers for Susan Anderson. Hooray! 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 There, boys and girls, was the story of how the record was set straight. See you next week for more adventure with Ranger!